Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, good day, everyone. I'm Leona Fields. I'm the director of the pension fund at York University. And today I'm going to talk about the pension investments. Uh, before I start, though, I just want to um, acknowledge and thank a few people that have helped in uh, putting the day or the, the presentation together today. So first of all, I do want to uh, introduce my staff that is, that is here. You actually see the entire pension investment department here, the four, uh, four people. So um, in the middle here, we have Mei Lung. She's the manager of pension investments. We have Jonathan Yi, who's the senior analyst, and Radha Vengadesa Sarma, who is our junior analyst. I'd also like to thank Mary Stearns for uh, helping with um, the all organ arrangements for today, and also Grant McNair and his team in the back taking care of the webcast and the, and the IT issues. So um, if you're watching on the webcast and you'd like to have me to address any particular things or you have any questions, um, for the Q&A at the end, please email fundinfo at yorku.ca. That email address is being monitored during the presentation, so um, I will be able to answer questions that you submit to that email. Um, please note that I will be talking only about the pension investment side of things today. I will not be addressing anything to do specifically with benefits or uh, pension entitlements, your own personal pension accounts. If you're interested in, in that area, there's um, a variety of sessions and workshops that the Pension Benefits Department puts on, um, and they're available online, or you can uh, contact Ask PB and get more information um, on that. Um, uh, Teresa Dusharm will be here later to answer uh, questions in that area if there are any specific things that can be addressed. So today um, we'll be talking about um, uh, this agenda. So first of all, we be presenting some general statistics about the pension fund. Um, we'll be presenting the investment performance for 2018 and some longer periods, talk about the investment policy that we follow and how we allocate um, our, across various asset classes, and then a very brief governance overview is uh, to give you an indication as to how decisions are made and how uh, it's decided and determine how investments will be made for our pension fund, and then we'll have a chance for uh, Q&A at the end. So just to start off uh, some statistics, we do have only one pension plan for all faculty and staff here at York University. Our plan membership at the end of 2018 was uh, approximately 8,800 members altogether. Uh, about half of those are actively working, and the other half have either left the university and left their money in the pension fund, or are, at, or are retired and receiving benefits um, currently. In 2018, um, you can see there the numbers, the contributions and the benefits paid out are big numbers. Um, it's a large plan, it's a large fund, and it's, uh, it's not chump change that we're, that we're talking about. So contributions by employees and by the university was uh, just over $75 million in 2018. Over $110 million were paid out in benefits, and that's to a very, very large extent monthly retirement payments. It also includes lump sum payments for people who uh, leave the university and take their money with them, or um, survivor and, and death benefits for when, when um, a retiree passes away for their beneficiary. We had um, approximately $12 million in expenses, 
Uh, the vast majority of that is investment management fees. It sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, um, uh, but the investment managers do generally produce very good returns for us, and it's, and it's, it's quite worth it. Um, you, do, you can see also that, unfortunately, um, we had a negative investment income of 5.6 million, and uh, that's as, as a, a resulting in a negative rate of return for 2018, um, which, of course, is not desirable, uh, but it's a fairly short period of time, and over the long term, our, our fund still has managed to, to do well. Just to give a little bit of context, last year, 2017, the investment income was um, about $285 million on the positive side. So um, let's hope that the, um, that the, the negative is, is short-lived, and we actually do know already that it, it is fairly short-lived. 2019 to date, the, the fund has had uh, very, good return and, and positive success and, and has rebounded. The value of the pension fund at the end of the year is $2.5 billion. So the York employees collectively are worth, just the pension fund is worth $2.5 billion. That's a lot of money. So let's, let's look at the uh, performance in a little bit more detail. Um, so this chart shows the performance by uh, asset class or by the various categories that we invest in. As, as I mentioned, 2018 was, was a tough year. There was a lot of volatility in, um, in the capital markets in the later uh, part of the year. Investment returns varied by asset class. Um, equities and bonds did not do so well, pro producing negative returns in 2018. However, our real assets, infrastructure and real estate, in the middle there you can see the um, large positive bars, uh, had very, very good returns. Um, as, as I mentioned though, it's very important to focus on the long term. Our investment strategies are always long term. We're not day traders. We don't invest that way. Uh, we, in, we invest for multiple years at a time. That's the time horizon that we're looking at when we make, when we make investments. Um, so over the long term, our fund does continue to perform well, uh, returning 7.4% over uh, the last four years and 10% uh, over the last decade. Um, and those returns are better than the passive benchmark, uh, which we use as a comparative tool to determine if our strategies are being successful or not. This page summarizes the, uh, the asset mix policy and how we actually allocate across managers. So on the left-hand side, you can see our policy by asset class, and these are our target allocations, not necessarily our exact allocations, but our, our actual are actually very quite close to those. Um, uh, but that's, those are our, our target allocations. And on the right-hand side is our investment managers and how those asset classes are actually invested in specific portfolios. Um, so we, there's different types of investments with different characteristics. It's important not to put all your eggs in one basket. Different, uh, we want to have different types of investments. So if something isn't doing well, something else might be doing better. As we, we saw in the previous chart, equities didn't do so well, but our infrastructure did very, very well and, and pretty much saved us in, in 2018 from even worse returns. Um, so we also want to manage the, the risk, various risk profiles of different investments and by putting different types of investments together, you can uh, hopefully produce a lower, lower risk. What does risk mean to us? Risk means losing money, or uh, also we define it as the volatility of returns and how different, how 
the return swing from one period to the next. And ultimately, we want to have as stable returns uh, as, as possible. So you might be wondering, okay, what are, what are these asset classes? What are they actually, uh, actually, before I get into that, I just, there was one point I wanted to make on this slide. You can see from the colors on the, on the left-hand side um, and how they translate into the colors on, on the right-hand side. So there's half the fund is in equity on the, the purple on the, on the left-hand side, and we have a, a variety of managers in, uh, in, in that space, and I'll talk a little, about, a little bit more about those in detail. And on bonds, we have fewer, we have uh, a large allocation, but we have fewer managers. Um, the infrastructure funds actually in the blue doesn't show the detail. We have um, 14 uh, portfolios within that uh, blue wedge um, at this time. So you might be wondering what um, you know. What is what does this all mean? What is, what is an asset class? How much do we have in that asset class, and how how is it actually invested? So let's look at each asset class in a, a little bit more detail. So equity, what is it? It means that our investment managers will buy and trade company stock. Uh, making us the shareholders or partial owners of a company and allowing us to share in the earnings. Uh, sometimes those earnings are positive, sometimes those earnings are negative, and those are uh, publicly traded on the stock exchanges. So how much do we have? We have 50% of our fund in equities. It's the largest allocation that we do have. Um, for a particular asset class, and it's just over uh, $1.26 billion. So uh, that's, again, a, a lot of money, and it's invested across seven different portfolios in a core satellite type of structure, all with global mandates. So let's look at that in a, a little bit more detail because there was changes in 2018 in our equity portfolio. We used to be allocated um, by region. So we had a particular Canadian equity portfolio. We had particular US equity portfolios. And we had other global or international portfolios. We moved away from that, from that domestic versus foreign um, into global um, to provide more opportunities and uh, more better uh, ris risk adjusted returns. So we have a core, which is uh, two portfolios of low volatility equity. Um, so the, uh, the idea there is those are fairly stable. Again, equities will always be moving up and down with the capital markets, with depending on what's going on in the economy, and there's multiple um, factors that drive the capital markets and, and, and equity returns, but the, the, the core is a fairly stable uh, piece of the, of the equity portfolio. And then we have satellite ec portfolios, or what we call, I mean, just figuratively around that core, that are more active, uh, very high conviction, a low number of stocks within each portfolio, very, um, and very active, actively managed, and again, managed for the long term. There's actually fairly low turnover um, in, in, our, in our equity portfolios. So um, over the past years, before we changed, it was actually our equity was actually doing quite well. It wasn't broken, so why fix it? Well, as if anyone who invests in RSPs, you know, the 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 bottom line, the uh, the the small print always says past performance does not guarantee future results. So the world is changing. What worked in the past isn't necessarily going to work in the future. The world is um, more global and. This strategy gives our investment managers more opportunity to invest where they see 
um, the potential to, to add value and also to ensure that our risks are managed and that we're compensated for, for taking those risks. So the objective is to improve the overall uh, efficiency of the portfolio and the risk adjusted returns. Um, just as a note, um, you know, you might say, well, you know, we are a equity portfolio did so bad in 2018, maybe that wasn't a good decision. Maybe we shouldn't have changed and we should have stayed where we were. Um, just a, a, a couple, a few more, more stats. In 2018, the, the Canadian equity market returned negative 8.9%. The U.S. returned 4.2, and Europe and Asia was negative 6. So our old portfolio was much heavier in Canada than we are now. So if we had maintained our old structure, we would have done even worse. So, so far, we're, um, we're, we're happy, and it's, the portfolio is actually doing what we expect it to do. Let's look at our bonds. So bonds, what are they? Bonds are loans to governments or corporations in exchange for interest payments to the investor. That's us. Um, so how much do we have in bonds? We have a 30% allocation, which is a, a sizable chunk of the fund. Um, it's about 750 million altogether. Um, and how is it invested? It's invested 20% in Canadian bonds, with uh, one manager and 10% in global bonds with two managers. Our infrastructure is a little bit different from um, our uh, equity and bond portfolios. Equity and bonds are publicly traded or over the counter and there's very, very liquid. They can be bought and sold on, on a daily basis. Um, infrastructure, first of all, what is infrastructure? It's real assets, real tangible holdings, real things such as airports, roads, um, electricity utilities, cell phone towers, wind farms, solar panels, um, as well as courthouses and hospitals, which is considered social infrastructure. Um, so how much do we have? We have a 10% allocation in infrastructure and a current investment of approximately 300 million. How is it invested? As I said, equities and bonds are, are publicly traded and also when we invest, when we hire, for example, a new equity manager, we know exactly what's in their portfolio. We know exactly what we're buying into and what we're going to get. And when we make that investment, uh, the investment is fully allocated right at the beginning, right off the bat. For infrastructure, it's a little bit different. We invest in private limited partnerships, which are not traded on the stock market. Um, and most of the funds have fixed term, usually 10 to 12 years, but some of them have 25 years. Um, so with infrastructure, when we actually make a commitment, there is actually nothing in the fund us and other institutional investors will commit a particular amount of money to the fund. And then that manager will go out and search for investments that fit their philosophy. And of course, we know what their philosophy is and we know the type of investment that, we're go that they're going to be investing in before we commit to them. We do our due diligence and we make all those um, all that research and, and so on. We know what type of investments, but we don't know the specific investment that they're going to, to actually invest in. So they will go and find those deals and then when they're ready to make that deal, they will ask us for a particular amount of money and we give it to them and then over usually about the first five years of the fund, we then fully commit our 25 million or 35 million or whatever it was that we said 
um, we were going to invest with them in, in the first place. And then uh, they manage that investment, they improve it, they, we receive interest payments back, we receive dividends, they may sell it, and we receive capital gains, and at the end of the fund, we've received all our money back, plus profit and um, an interest in, and so on, and uh, so far all our infrastructure uh, portfolios have produced positive, ver very positive returns and, uh, and have done very well. Real estate is also a real asset, of course. I mean, most people, I think, are, are fairly um, familiar and more comfortable with, with real estate. For us, our real estate portfolio includes office towers, industrial warehouses, hotels, uh, apartments, and, and retail shopping. Um, so how much do we have? We have a 10% allocation, and we currently have about 180 million dollars invested in real estate. Um, how is it invested? It's similar to infrastructure in that it's in private limited partnerships. Um, we have a, a Canadian real estate fund and we also have US and global real estate funds as well. So um, real estate is actually relatively new for us, we've only been investing for about three years in real estate, but it's actually a quite traditional asset class for many uh, pension funds. So as I said, you may be w wondering, um, you know, who, who makes these decisions and how did we get to, to where we are? So I'm just going to very briefly go over the, uh, the governance of the, um, of the pension fund. So, uh, and, and the plan as well. So ultimately, the Board of Governors is responsible for the overall plan and fund and makes the approvals um, if there's any changes to the plan text and, and so on. Of course, the, the Board of Governors um, cannot manage a $2.5 billion fund on a daily basis, so they've delegated responsibilities on the investment side to the pension fund board of trustees. The board of trustees is a board of various stakeholders within the universities. There are nominees from the board of governors, from management, from the various employee groups. Um, it's officially 16 members on, on the board of trustees. Um, the board of trustees, um, has as a those stakeholders are not all experts in investments so there is also a subcommittee or our pension fund investment committee which is a subcommittee of internal and external experts we have um, finance professors on that committee we have people who do have positions similar to myself at other pension organizations. We have retired pension um, and investment executives. So there's a, a, a array of uh, knowledge and expertise on the Pension Investment Committee. And that committee reviews the performance, looks at various investment strategies, and will make recommendations to the Pension Fund Board of Trustees who will ultimately approve changes to the investment policy or any new investment management hire. And then we have our, the staff who actually does the managing and monitoring on a daily basis. Um, and we interact with the um, external service providers because as again, four people cannot manage a, uh, a 20, uh, two and a half billion dollar fund. So we use external investment managers. Um, and I, I wanna be clear when I say investment managers, you may think of an individual, that's not what it means. And I'm talking about an investment management firm or a company. And we invest with some of the largest investment management firms in the world. And um, mo our, our investment managers, I would say would have anywhere from 100 employees to you know, 
tens or hundreds of thousands of employees. One of our managers, for example, is BlackRock, who is the largest investment manager in the world. So we also, um, some other key external service providers is, are the custodian, which is actually the bank, um, CIBC Mellon in holds and uh, in, in trust all those, all that money for us and actually um, will do the in investment instructions as required by us or the investment managers. We use consultants to assist with research um, on the investment policy side and um, we also, of course, require an auditor because we uh, are required by law to provide audited financial statements on an annual basis. And when required, we use uh, a lawyer primarily for the legal review of the, the limited partnership agreements that I, that I mentioned um, when we uh, invest in an, an infrastructure fund. So that's, uh, that's all I have for today, and I'm just going to put on my listening thing, thing, so if anyone talks into the microphone, I can hear. And if anyone has any questions, please uh, stand up to the mic and... And Mary will also let me know if any questions come in from anybody watching. Nothing? I was, oh, there. Okay, we have one question. Can you um, stand up to the microphone, please? Not only for me, but also for, um, so the captioner can. Uh, <coughs> I, is this on? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if this is in scope or not, but a few years ago there was a pretty dramatic uh, worry about the state of the pension fund, and so our contributions increased and so on. Can you speak to the health of the fund in terms of where it's, where it's at at the moment? Um, not directly. I mean, it, it has recovered um, to a large extent, but the, that's an actuarial valuation question, and uh, that's not really what where my area. I don't know. Do you want to address that, Teresa? This is Teresa Ducharme. I think everyone might know her from the pension and benefits area. So. Each year the university does a actuarial valuation to find out what the health of the pension plan is. We have to file it every three years. We will not be filing the one that's being worked on right now. It's projecting that we are going to have a going concern deficit as well as a solvency deficit. We filed last year and we had a going concern surplus with a solvency deficit, but with the negative 0.6 um, in 2018, both are projected to be negative this year. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Going once. Going twice. Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, coming to listen to me today. And happy spring. Enjoy the nice weather outside. <laughs>